later in the year, um, she went missing for about a week, and I seemed to be one of the only people caring about her whereabouts and where she was. And um, it didn't turn out well. Uh, it was a spiral event. She ended up having to go to a facility past London, and I never got to find out if she was going to get her credits. It was likely that she was not. And mm -hmm. it was a it was a hard blow as an educator. It was a hard blow as a person who pours their heart into the students that they teach. I'm getting. I don't like thinking about it because I still never got to find out, you know, what's mm. happening with her, how's, how's, how's things rolling for that, for that kid who just so much potential to do great things but had a really, like, came into a really horrible situation in life and had no choice in the matter, right? So um, I felt like I failed her because I felt like I should have done more even though I wasn't sure at the time what that was or that I should have stood up to some of the other adults who had more power to do more for her and weren't. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the system failed her because she was getting tossed from home to home and nobody was, she was getting sifted through the cracks. and. And it was tough, and you can't, like you said, you can't save them all, you can't, uh, but you can reflect and you can move forward. Moving forward, in all honesty, I think sometimes uh, as an educator, I have to remember my power only goes so far, and, mm -hmm. you know, I have to guard my heart a little more right. sometimes. Right, which is tough, because yeah. it, you just can't, just, you, you can't be a robot. No. And you, we wear so many hats and we have so, so much on our shoulders because we're just striving for the sex, success of our students. It's, um, it's very difficult sometimes. We have to do a lot of debriefing to kind of move past that. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, what have you learned from your own students in general? Like, uh, when we're, we're, it's all conversational when we're, it's a banter, a Absolutely. dance between student and teacher. As much as you pour into them, they're also teaching you. So Absolutely. what kind of things have you learned um, about yourself? Yeah, some, well, some of my students have taught me unbelievable perseverance. I have seen some kids, um, you know, persevere through certain situations in their lives and still come out smiling, and it's humbling. You know, mm -hmm. on days when, oh, you know, I got this and this and this to do, and da -da 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 -da, and they walk in your room with a smile on their face, greeting you with a positive hello to, to the day, and you know, you know, what they're holding in their backpack kind of thing and it's like wow man like it just it, re <laughs> it reminds you to be grateful for the privileges that we have and have been born into even born into being Canadian I teach so many new Canadian students and knowing some of the things that they've witnessed in their life and they've seen I mean my my students teach me on the daily to be grateful and to practice gratitude and um, be thankful for the things that I have uh, furthermore my students have taught me the utmost patience and that I have more patience than I think I give myself credit for. Sometimes I think kids in general will do that to you. <laughs> well, yeah, they like to test the boundaries. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So they, you know, they teach me to keep my own emotions in check and focus on the betterment of them and not, and not be like all about me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right, so, right. Because right. my classroom, well, it's my classroom. Truly, it's theirs. Right. right? So right. it's turning that focus to them and things like that. Mm -hmm. hey, so without naming any names, tell me about a classroom or a school situation that had you doubled over in laughter. Because um, we like to have fun. We for have, sure. You know, and I mean, and if it's not funny, if it's not, you know, if you can't laugh at yourself, then you yeah. know, what's the point? Absolutely. There's been a few, honestly, I could, I could say a few. I mean, it's always funny when a kid farts in class and it rumbles off those plastic <laughs> chairs. I can't help but laugh. I'm a little kid like that. I will laugh at that. But I do enjoy good wit. And uh, when I was teaching uh, some intermediate grades earlier in my career, I did have a student every day who um, find it, found it a challenge to bring the materials he needed to class to <laughs> you know, complete work and whatnot. So every day I would ask him if he, he had these materials. and. And every day I get told the same answer. So finally, I'm like, I said, you know, man, what did you bring to school? That's what I was like, are you kidding? And he looked at me very seriously, and, and I did not expect it at all, which made it even the more funny. He said, Miss, I'll tell you what, I brought my A game. And I was like, I, I wanted to, like, reprimand him because it was getting out of hand, but I was like, I couldn't help but laugh. And, and I just threw him a pound it and told him to, to sit down. I was like, okay, I guess. Uh, well, if you brought your A game, we'll have some success today. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, well, okay. I'm gonna tell you a little thing about what happened to me. Uh, one time at bed, I was, 
I had some kind of, they were dress pants, but they've been around for a while. And I squatted down to get to my student's level and the seam ripped on the inside of my pants. Oh no. So it was in the middle of the day, so I couldn't go home and it was, you know, it could be in view. I, I, I kind of walked a certain way so that it wasn't. So me and my problem solving skills, I went into the, the staff bathroom and I stapled them. Oh my God. The inside, I stapled them. So I'm walking around and the staples are digging into my thigh and I'm trying to play it off. And I'm like, okay, I had to ask you know, one, of, one of my colleagues, I'm like, okay, are the staples showing? And they're dying laughing. <laughs> and I'm like, look, I, you know, I have to get through the day. They're dying laughing. They just said, don't squat anymore. You're good to go. But uh, I had to laugh at myself, but my keen problem-solving skills that's, and... <laughs> that's pretty good, though. And the fact that it happened and, okay, we have to continue. And yeah. A lot of times, even, you know, when you're on the at the board, some things happen and you just have to roll with it. Absolutely. And that's, that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it creative sometimes, so... Gotta roll with the punches. That's right. I'm, I'm impressed with those problem-solving skills, honestly. And, and not just the outside. I oh wow, inside out. That does not sound stay. comfortable. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I no. yeah. Woo. Anyway, got through the day. It was an A day. Anyway, um, I believe that working with the staff, um, a staff that prides itself on uh, being uh, team players and. Um, uh, you know, all student first mentality is so, so important uh, to uh, an important environment to work with. Um, I think it's the best atmosphere. Uh, what crazy antics have you seen in your days of teaching with the uh, staff that you can recall that you enjoyed and you just made, you know, it just made your, your work environment yeah. that much well, wonderful I'm fortunate enough now to work with a staff that does this yeah mm -hmm. I'm sure you know the honest truth is not all staffs do right mm -hmm. so sometimes uh, staffs are like high schools right people are sec separate entities or cliques and it's not an all-for-one attitude but uh, fortunately for me the school I'm at currently is it's like a second family it's amazing I see teachers riding plasma cars and bikes up and down the hallway uh, with students to kind of help some of our um, uh, as students you know get out some energy so that they can focus in the classroom I've seen uh, people uh, wearing costumes I've seen teachers singing and kind of even like dancing a jig to try and get their students attention at the front of the room um, running around I've seen you running around outside at recess with the kids playing tag doing this um, it's it's amazing even I, I noticed the the staff at our school everybody wears our school gear multiple times a week and it's like it just promotes that school feeling like and then you know you look around and like the kids are wearing it multiple times a week and there's mm -hmm. this school spirit that goes along with it and it's really felt when you walk in the building and it's it's almost it's almost hard to put into words because it's like a feeling that you you get when you're there and just the way everyone is it's always the smiles and good mornings in the morning to every one of those students and mm -hmm. I think it's a top-down type of environment. I, like the administration kind of sets the tone, and um, I think that kind of trickles down to everybody else, and 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 vice versa. It's back and forth, and um, you know the administration is. I actually you saw administration uh, riding the plasma car yeah, and the bike, exactly. and and um, you know playing with a sticky bat ball, whatever it takes to to get the student to be motivated. To yeah, learn. I think that's great. And, and I think when the administration. Um, be, is part of the team like that like you said it's what it it's what really creates that family team atmosphere because you know you can have staff that really m merge together but sometimes it can be hard to get that through and through feeling when the administrator is the administrator and not like they're the, almost like not part of the team you got they're the coach but they're also a player you know mm -hmm. what I mean like they're they kind of wear both hats in that way and I really feel that where we're at this year and I think it resonates in every wall of the building well, so. I, I think even the, the students, you can tell the students, they come in the classroom, whether it be a snor snowstorm outside or rain or, or just coming into the schoolyard in the morning, you see smiles on their faces, you see them excited to learn, um, they're, they're, you know, very welcoming, like, hey, hey, um, Miss Wilson, or hey, whoever, 
and uh, they're just excited about being in the school and even the, the, the challenging students, they're, it's like their own home, that's what I find. I and agree. I, the, I think it's reflective of us though. I honestly, like, I think we reflect them, but they also reflect us because every morning I walk in before the students come in, because we're in there earlier, and every single person greets me with a smile and says hello and good morning. Mm -hmm. Everyone, I, I don't look around my workplace and can point out anybody that I feel looks or seems unhappy to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't think that even in all of my years of teaching that I've ever been at a school where I felt so excited to get up and go to every morning. So yeah. I'm not, it's no surprise to me that that's how the students feel. A lot of times that's a motivating factor uh, for staff and students, right? Sometimes it's like, oh, I have to go to work. But n never I don't have I think it never have I, I felt that way. way. Yeah, no. I, I agree. Um, I hear comments, um, we're talking about the entire educational system. I hear comments from parents, complaints from parents that um, teachers get two months off, they get whole March break off, and then they get two weeks for the Christmas break. Um, you know, they're, they're just... You know, it, it, we're looked at as spoiled. What, what are your comments on that? I have lots of comments on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the thing about our society is that the grass is always greener on mm -hmm. the other side, right? Mm -hmm. Like everybody's always got something to complain about about somebody else's job and it seems like teachers do, seem to have a big target on their back as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, sorry that you checked the wrong box and didn't choose that <laughs> career. <laughs> okay. like, um, no, but truly, yes, we have all of those breaks, but they are natural breaks of our job and so mm -hmm. it, it, that can't be ignored. We all grew up with summers and Christmas vacations and this and that and, you know, our teachers had that time off and it's seems like more in recent you know history that people seem to have such a problem with this but I um, I also think that it's not that I'm any more deserving of that time off per se but people can definitely rest assured that um, those hours in that I'm not working in the summer I work in lieu of during the school year whether it be writing report cards or um, I don't think people realize like every time I write report cards I'm probably putting in another week and a half's worth of work it is a lot of work. It's probably a solid 60 hours worth of work mm -hmm. if you're writing them properly, the way that you should be. And uh, it's probably another 60 hours worth of work. That's a week and a half worth of work right there, times three times. Um, extracurriculars, uh, you know, math night, art night, kindergarten open house night, all the, every other night that goes on at school that we, we go there and we uh, be there. And also teaching, like people think we're just, you know, lazy by the pool all summer. Well, as soon as August 1st hits, I'm back in teacher mode. I'm back plan and what's my plan for the year mm -hmm. how am I going to set up my classroom this year what have I got going on and um, I don't I'm sure you'll agree teaching and education is a lifestyle it's in everything that I do I go to the store I see things I'm out with my own kids and I'm like oh look at that I could buy that I could do this stem challenge in my classroom that would be so cool mm -hmm. it is embedded in everything that I do right. and 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 so therefore sometimes that that little bit of time off to decompress and really truly be with my family is okay and I'm sorry that people are jealous of that but <laughs> you know what I mean but rest assured to the people that are that we put in those additional hours during the school year mm -hmm. it's like we're banking loo time is, ba is basically right. what it is if you want to look at it like that right well if you think about it a lot of times we're with the students more than the parents are throughout the day, throughout the week, yeah. and uh, you know we have to deal with um, their behaviors, their good days, their bad days, their emotional roller coasters, their hormones, their their uh, peer conflict, and it's a lot on your shoulders. And it, it is time consuming and mentally draining. Absolutely, and then and I, I'm I'm curious to know. I guess sometimes the question I'll pose to people who who get so irate about the amount of with teachers are paid when they get all this time off and blah 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 blah. I guess my question would be like how do you not value the person who spends as much time if not more um, mm -hmm. with your child every single day and not only am I spending that amount of time with it but um, you know let's be real when parents are with their kids 24 7 they're not teaching them like hardcore curriculum and getting them to do these activities that are like you know stem challenges and this and so it's not only am I supervising 29 of your kids but I'm teaching them and doing it in an extremely engaging way and then reporting back to you about how you know this is going to mold their future right. and yet it's so devalued that it's like well we should be paid less and worked harder or and it's like oh man but 
but you just spent, you know, hundred plus dollars to go see that sporting event or that concert, and you know nobody squabbles over the millions of dollars that athletes pay in for pure entertainment. Yeah. I don't know. So it, it's uh, it's the way that society values things, right? So. Right. Well, we have a pr impressionable minds in our hands, so that's a pretty big responsibility. It's the future, right? So um, I, I think that um, I think we're well deserved in in our, our time off. Uh, we we need it to recharge. And, I agree. Uh, just like and, the kids and do. Just for creative re creativity purposes, we have time to reflect and find new creative ways to, to reach a student. So, yeah. um, we're going to take a little bit of break. Thank you so much for your answers, and uh, we'll be right back.